pledged an oath in blood. And now my home, all that I loved is gone. Pain is all I have left. Kratos, uh, before he became what he is today, the god of war, he was a captain in the Spartan army, and he kind of rose up through the ranks and became a general. He was facing off against the barbarian army. His army was outnumbered. He calls up to Ares, and he says, destroy my enemies and my life is yours. And in that instant, Ares shows up, and he has two harpies bring up the Blades of Chaos. So the Blades of Chaos were forged in the pits of Tartarus by the smith god Hephaestus. They're bloodthirsty. Like, they, these blades almost have a soul to them. The original character was a Spartan with a short sword. But we wanted to have something that was unique and something that was, you know, more spectacular. One of the biggest things that we've always tried to do with this series is, is make the player feel empowered. Charlie Wen, our, our original concept designer for Kratos, had gone through many, many iterations. He's doodling on this napkin. After all these beautiful paintings that Charlie made, so many of them. I mean, you guys can look at all the books in the history, but it all starts from a napkin. We wanted to kind of have some, a dynamic range with his weapon. So he would throw his blades out, but we were wondering how is he going to get them back. Influenced by a game called Rygar that we really liked back then, and saw that his weapon was attached to a chain, and we said, well, let's just try to do that. And then we did that times two, and it felt really good. He becomes a ballerina, um, ballerina of death with him. Everything that you're doing always wraps around those blades. These blades will stand the test of time in terms of a weapon. There will be only chaos. My name's Richard Furr. I have a love affair with steel. I've made maybe 200 swords, and I'm happy with three of them. If you look at the whole pantheon of blacksmithing, the real art of the tool maker is never as exemplified as with a blade. If you're off, if you build it wrong, someone's life is at risk before they could pull the useful iron from a rock. If they wanted anything made out of iron, they would have had to have used meteorite falls. So they'd have the space rock, the heaven metal, that they would forge into shape. And Aristotle wrote about this. The Spartan sword that we're making today is a later period Spartan. We're crafting a blade from raw material. We're taking it bloom, and we're forging it out into a functional weapon. Then we take it to a blacksmith's forge. With uh, two bellows, just like the Greeks used. We need to pull it together into a solid bar. And we do that through repeated heating and forging and some forge welding, meaning we're joining the individual pieces together. From there, it gets refined by hammering, so we force it into the shape we want it to be in. We heat the blade up to roughly 1450 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we cool it. We have very little time to cool, matter of seconds.
This tool of death is born in this quench. Taking off the rough edges, giving it a keen edge, a proper hilt, and then, then it can go off into the world and do what it was made to do. Back in the day, it would have been to defend and further the ideals of Sparta. And it had to do that very well. My name is Peter Thomas. I started with uh, the Japanese Kyokushin Karate, later on drafted into Thai boxing and Western boxing, as well as John Fan Gong Fu and Ji Kun Do. This is uh, what we would call a short sword uh, in today's world. And uh, again, this is usually roughly in about 19 inches in, in, uh, in length, but the blade is about 15 inches. This is used for one major thing, and that was for close quarter combat, pretty much to kill or to be killed with this type of sword. The Spartan warriors were so physically fit and so intense and so feared that they weren't even allowed in the first Olympic games. The fighting posture and the stance of the Spartan warrior was very similar to a Western boxer. They also have horizontal strikes that come here to head level, neck level, and also horizontal strikes that come down to the body. And they would have thrusts that go inward. They also have thrusts that go to the well of the neck. A lot of cuts would go low as well, down to the femoral artery, and come upward, like an uppercut in boxing. There's a famous quote by a Spartan poet and a warrior, and it goes something like this, do not be in love with life when you are a fighting man. And that just goes to show what kind of lifestyle that these men had. Alert the Warrior. You must subscribe or die. If you like kicking ass, make sure to check out more videos and share them with your comrades.